The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Thank you, Tally Olson. We are back. New York Mets in the zone. I'm Ralph Tycho with the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network, and I'm being pinch hit, pinch hit for Marty Rose's brother, Bernie, is pinch hitting for me. So it'll be the three of them, Marty Rose, Bernie Rose, and Robert Cole, um, taking you through a semi bittersweet, let's say, Met you. We're going to be. T- you guys are going to be talking about the late great Tom Seaver and um, Marty. I'm going to have you start and take over because uh, your main gripe became my main gripe when you pointed out that um, the man died without that statue being completed and. Uh, if you guys will, um, Bernie, welcome to the show. You've been on the airwaves many Thank times. You. And um, always a pleasure. Um, the fact that th- the three out of the four of us have um, grew up within 30 feet of each other, um, <laughs> right down in the next building 60-some-odd um, years ago. <laughs> Um, and, um, I've said this on the air before, one of my fondest memories is sitting in the Rose, Rose house, Marty, um, and I, and Shelly Levinson playing go to the head of the class. (laughs) Shelly Levinson was already at the head of the class. If I remember correctly, Marty in a close second and Ralph gone, what class? Um, that, was a, <laughs> that was a board game. And in the background, in the background was Bernie on his first keys, um, <laughs> relentlessly practicing. You don't become a renowned, not renowned, but a, a, a jazz musician. You don't do that simply by uh, throwing you, throwing it out there years and years of practice and uh you are that and uh, glad to have you here well thanks thanks all right guys have a great show marty take it away on tom Seaver. robert enjoy it as well nice having you too okay uh right. thanks ralph all right so um obviously the best player in Mets history, and lots of teams have statues or something to commemorate their best players at their stadiums. Now, um, the Mets did change the address of City Field to 41 Seaver Way. I think they did that last year. That was very nice. But this people needed to see something at the ballpark as they were going in. That's what you want to see, the statue of the greatest player of the team. And they put it off, they put it off, they put it off. And finally they uh, decided to do it. And and COVID comes in, they can't finish it, and it's just and then and then the man passes away before he could even see it somehow for himself. He knew he wasn't able to get you know to travel and get there and see it. You know, he had retired from public life earlier, but. Just, just the fact that he's gone before the the statue is built, uh, it's terrible. Just terrible. 
Yeah, I'd have to agree. It's uh, it, it's one thing to to not do it, but after how many years? You know, I mean, and how many times were they? Was it brought up? Were they asked about it? I mean, it's one thing that it didn't get done, but it didn't get done for 50 years. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's been, uh, well. All right, even 40, so, since he retired, 30 40, years, you know. Yeah, well, uh, was it 40? What, what year did he get traded? Like uh, 78 or something? 78. Like yeah, 78. Yeah. 78. So, what, so that's... Uh, Jesus, yeah, for, it's over 40 years, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, but even say, you know, when he retired, since then, it's still been a lot of right, years. Right, know, 30 right. 30 years. Right. So I, I assume, I know you did, Bernie. Uh, Robert, did you see the uh, MLB uh, tribute to him today? They did a 20-minute, yes. yeah, they did a 20-minute tribute uh, and it was very, very nice. Uh, really, yeah. really good. Um, but, you know, then, with everybody... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, and then, you know, the other thing, too, guys, is that okay, they had they knew last night that Seaver had passed away. They had till 4 o'clock today to have gotten patches made and put on the uniforms, okay? And they didn't do that. That the patches aren't going to go on until tomorrow. So, you know, that's a, a thing that they loused up on. Although the team themselves took it upon themselves to all dip their knees in the dirt as a tribute to Seaver, because as you remember, when he pitched, his uh, leg was always covered in dirt from his right. knee hitting the ground. Right, right. So, <laughs> so they did that on their own. Okay, but you would have thought that in the 12 or 18 hours that uh, the Wilpons had, they could have gotten patches made and sewn on the uniforms. You would think so. At least a, a black armband, something. They, too bad they, they couldn't get something together that quickly. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. So anyway, I you know with all the um, all the accolades and everything, and everybody saying. How how great he was, and all all the numbers that people were coming up with today, um, you know, you knew about a lot of them, but then I didn't realize a couple of things. You know, a lot of guys had in the old days three hundred wins. A lot a lot of guys in the old days had three thousand strikeouts, but how many of them? Combined 300 wins, 3,000 strikeouts, and an ERA under three. Just two, my man. Just two. Just <laughs> two. That's right. And one right. of them is Tom Seaver. That is correct. And the and other Walter one. Johnson. <laughs> Walter Johnson. Walter Johnson, who, uh, who none of us ever saw. But have heard about forever, and uh, oh right, right. You know, just you know. Just, I read just, that stat today. Yeah, sixty-one shutouts, seventh all time, three hundred and eleven wins, eleventh all time, and then somebody pointed out today that between August twenty-sixth and September twenty-seventh. Of 1969, he had eight consecutive complete game victories. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. He had a lot of complete games. I mean, he oh, had... my God. And he, yeah. and he also took uh, three games into the ninth inning with a no-hitter. Really? Had, so though, yeah, although he never completed it. But um, he – Not with the uh, Yeah. Until oh, Santana, it. until right. Santana threw the no hitter, he was the only Met uh, to ever even take a no hitter into the ninth inning. Mm. But he did get one with the Reds, so yeah. you know at least he got that off his back. Yeah, yeah, I remember watching that that one with, uh, with the uh, Jimmy Qualls with one oh. out in the ninth. Oh man, 
yeah. <laughs> well, me, me, and me and Bernie Robert were at the uh, nineteen sh- uh, strikeout game. Uh, Pete Alonzo. Uh, Pete Alonzo just hit a game winner. Did he? Oh yep. my goodness! Was Chapman still in there, or somebody else? No, somebody else. Oh, okay. Well, oh, they tied that game in the ninth. Wow. Yeah, they did. They tied it. They tied it in the ninth. I didn't <laughs> see that happen. Wow. Well, How do you yeah. like that? Very nice. Excellent. Wow. Uh, terrific. They're but, coming uh, around. Yep. Uh, you know the the pitching is so bad. It's just. You know, you can't trust anybody except, uh, you know, Jake. Seriously, there's not yeah. one guy in the rotation or the bullpen. Well, or maybe Lugo. You know, Lugo is doing really well in relief. But but then they switched him to uh, starter, and, you know, he's not stretched out enough right. yet to go more than, like, three or four innings. Maybe next time he can go a little further, but but outside of that, they got nobody. It's terrible. Well, well Peterson has pitched well, yeah. and you know, Peter, you know, and why they put him in the bullpen, I don't know. I mean, he's a much better starter than Gazelman, but uh, you yeah, know, they, they don't, they don't, they don't ask me. So <laughs> maybe they should. Yeah, they they got to get Gazelman out of that rotation. I mean, I don't know who they're going to put in there, but uh, it, it, it's just terrible. I'm just hoping that, you know, the new owner completely cleans house, you know, in the front office, you know. Well, I think he, yeah, I think he will. Uh... He hasn't said anything yet, has he? I haven't seen a quote from him. I haven't seen anything. Well... Yeah, well, he, he can't. really can't. He really can't say anything yet. I mean, he's got no official capacity. That's why I was so, you know, worried about the trading deadline. You know that uh, Bernie would, uh, Van Wagenen would do something stupid. But mm-hmm. well, I mean, you, I mean, Todd Fraser did have uh, a homer and two doubles today. <laughs> so you know, not that he. Yes, he did. Not that he's going to be there next year, but I mean, at least that's one of the moves that it, that he made. Yeah. Uh, geez, it's just um, horrible. I mean, well, yeah. if it was a regular length season, you know, you, there's always time to do things. There's time to for the team to gel, and there's there's, you, there's more time, you know, simply put, but not now. So. Right. Yeah, well, that's the true. No, gone. You're, yeah, you're right because you know if uh, you know if it was a full season and there was no COVID, then um, that that starter that that opted out that we had, uh, he he would have been back. Strowman. You know, yeah. Strowman. Yeah. He he would have been back. Right. And, and um, you know, Porcello hasn't been. Awful, but he hasn't been consistent. And um, uh, geez, the other, yeah, um, the other guy, you know, even yeah. even even the yeah, the, even these guys that they put in the other day that you're hoping, yeah, let's see, we let this Colomi kid, let's see what he's got. You know, he hasn't shown anything. Back to uh, Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, back to Brooklyn, yeah. Back to Brooklyn. And, and you know, Waka Waka hasn't uh he's been totally inconsistent. And Oswald showed a couple of good games and then he got hurt. And, you know, uh, I don't I don't think he I don't think he can ever really be a consistent starter. But, you know, he he showed he had a couple of good outings. You know, I thought maybe uh, he could have even gotten a couple of more starts the way things have been going. But, uh, no, on the I.L. And, uh, you know, it's really been been terrible. And there's been nobody in the bullpen that can do the job. I mean, maybe one time somebody can do the job, 
And then you think, oh, this guy looked good last time. Let's try him again. And the next time, forget about it. You know, the, two 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 uh, good performances in a row just doesn't happen with this staff. No, that, that's for sure. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I I don't expect a whole lot. You know, maybe they can sneak in these next four games with the Phillies, and that's going to go a long way to saying whether or not they even have a shot. So. Oh, that is true. You know, I mean, you've, you've only got roughly a little more than a third of the season left because, it, you know, well, it's just the rest of the month. And yeah, it's like 20-something games. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they're not out of it because – Second place gets you in there. What are they two two games out of a playoff spot right now? So uh, yeah, there were two game two games out of the uh, wild card because right. the first two the first two in each division get in, and then the next two best records get in. So when you go into a three out of five and you and you got Degrom in game one, you're really not in such a bad place. But the wild card is. I think the first wild card is what two out of three. Oh, is that what it is? I think so. Yeah, the first, the first round is two out of three, and it's all played in one park. So if you're the like the last guy, the last the last guy getting in, then you're playing two out of three on the road. Uh huh. So, well, yeah. Not yeah. That. You know, not, not that it makes that much of a difference. Well, to get back well, on on uh, to our uh, great one departed Tom Seaver. Yes. Uh, you may recall in 1971 we made a, a visit to Dodger Stadium and <laughs> Seaver <laughs> shut out the Dodgers six I, nothing. I do remember that. <laughs> yes. So when you have somebody like that in Game One, it it doesn't hurt. No, that. That that's true. Yes, I remember. I remember uh, Barn being very disappointed at that game. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Mets were my second favorite team back then, but you know the Dodgers yeah, were always my first. <laughs> yeah, and as a matter of fact, that was our last day uh, before starting back east. Yeah, right, right. The last day. We left New York on June 11th. And that game was something like August, uh, I don't know, August 20-something. We were were on the road that whole summer uh, camping out because I had just gotten out of the service and Barn had the summer off. So we had quite... A trip, yeah, and that, that, was, and that nice. was our last, our last uh, day in California. And right after the game, we got in the car and drove through the desert to Las Vegas. <laughs> right. <laughs> we we oh, saw the man. Dodgers beat the Giants at Candlestick Park, oh. and, uh, and we saw Harmon Killebrew hit a home run in. Uh, Metropolitan Stadium in Minnesota. <laughs> or you did, because I unfortunately went to the restroom. <laughs> and I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah. And a little nostalgia there from the from the Rose bro- brothers, uh, Robert. Yeah. yeah. That was uh yeah, fif- fifty years ago. Fifty years ago. Yeah, wow. that's right. I just, I just, I don't know. It sounds like, what? It can't be that long, you know? It just, when you say 50 years, it's just, uh, wow, man. I just, yeah. it's hard, it's hard, hard to, to take, really. really. That's why we don't think about it too much. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. So, man, I uh, so, but, hey, uh, speak, uh, speak, speaking about Seaver again, yes. what do you guys remember about the night that he got traded? Oh, jeez. 
Um, well, everybody was in a state of shock. Uh, I mean, you know, how, how could this be? How could they do that? Um, you know, I, I don't remember the whole story. Um, they were talking about it a little bit today. Uh, Russo was talking about it a little today on High Heat. Um, what, what, do you remember what Dick Young had to do with that? Uh, they say Dick Young, uh, the writer, uh, ran him out of town. Uh, yeah, Dick, Dick Young had the ear of M. Donald Grant. M. Donald Grant basically ran the team uh, for Mrs. for Mrs. Payson in right. those days, and uh, Dick Young kept saying to to M. Donald Grant that you know Seaver was becoming the show, and that you know he was going to be taking over the the face of the team, and you didn't want that, and you know he was becoming bigger than the team, and. Uh, at that, at that time, Dick Young had become a very bitter, uh, older sports writer. At one time, mm-hmm. he was an excellent sports mm-hmm. writer, but back then, he was he had just become very bitter, and him and Seaver really got into it. And um, Young kind of didn't like the new type of ball player. Seaver was one of the first, if you remember, college educated. Uh, used yeah. to wear a suit, carry an attaché case. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's right. And he was one of the first of the modern, you know, guys, you know, that the, today's players sort of emulate. But Dick Re- Dick uh, Young was an old-timer, old-school guy, and he didn't like it. He didn't think it was good for baseball. And he just kept ragging in uh, M. Donald Grant's ear. And, you know, it, it finally came to fruition. They got rid of him. Yeah. It sounds pretty familiar from, from what I recall. I guess I do remember uh, the whole hoopla over Dick Young. And and uh, by that time, yeah, Dick Young, like you said, he was old school, and it wasn't old school anymore. I mean, right. you know, things, things were way different. It was... Uh, by then, you know, you're into the mid '70s, and, and and the old days are way long gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Dick Young didn't want to give up on him, and you know, he he thought that uh, you know it should be like the old days, and that Seaver, you know, he's becoming bigger than the team, and I guess bigger than him too. So uh, that's probably what it was. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, because Dick Young, uh, he did not have the pull. He did not have uh, the stature anymore, really. He was kind of hanging on. Right. And, you know, things were different. You know, the sports writers weren't able to get in there. And, you know, in the old days, Dick Young's younger days, they would play cards with the players. They would go out and drink with the players. And, you know, that wasn't the case anymore then. You know, players had become... Uh, it's more aloof from the sports writers. You know, it just wasn't the same anymore. So, uh, that sounds you know, about right, yeah. But it was a, a dark day indeed. I, I can still remember listening to that night's game, and everybody, you know, there are all sorts of rumors going on, and right after the game was over, the announcement was made about, you know, Seaver being traded. And I believe, if I remember correctly, Dave Kingman, Kingman got traded that same night. Yeah, yeah. that could have been. I don't, re- I don't remember that, but uh, yeah. yeah, you're probably right. Okay. No, but that, I mean, you know, that, that that's like the Dodgers trading Sandy Koufax. I know they traded Mike Piazza, and they never should have done that. But, uh, you know, to trade Tom Seaver, it, it was it – was, it was just, it was incomprehensible, you know. I mean, it was. And crazy. then they got him back, and then they got him back, and they let him go again by making some stupid paperwork error that put him on the, basically the waiver list, and the White Sox took yeah, him. They, they didn't protect That's right. him from, from, right. from the draft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 
<laughs> Isn't that crazy? And you know, and Robert, you know, I, I was talking with Marty on the phone yesterday, and uh, it was because um, I, I reminded him that Seaver was actually on the '86 Red Sox, but did not pitch in the World Series because he got injured, and he did make his final start for Boston in September of that year. So wouldn't that have been something if yeah, Seaver yeah. actually pitched in that series and it would have turned out differently? Yeah. <laughs> Probably yeah. would have, yes. You're, yeah, you're absolutely right. I forgot all about that. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I mean, it's really it, – that would have been an amazing happenstance if if that would have occurred. But, yeah, but yeah, it didn't. unfortunately so, it didn't. <laughs> well, that – that was classic enough of a World Series. <laughs> it really didn't need anything else, but boy, that would have been the icing on the cake. Oh, oh for sure. sure. And and it's just the funny thing is we, as I brought up Piazza, the only two guys wearing a Mets hat in the Hall of Fame were those two guys. There you go. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which is shocking, really, after all these years. Yeah, and it's, you know, when you think back now, too, I mean, uh, Buddy Harrelson is kind of going through that same same thing. Uh, that Seaver, you know, he's got all time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that, really. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah. So. Well, what's more shocking to me was, you know, you. I mean, I know... I wasn't a little kid anymore, but when Seaver broke in, I was, you know, a teenager. You know, in 67, I was 16. But, uh, so, you don't think about it, but he's only six years older than I am now. Well, <laughs> you three know, years older and, than we are, yeah. Right, yeah. I know, but, yeah. but it always seemed like, you know, it, it, it always seemed like it had to have been more. Yeah. And when I heard oh, he was right. only 75, yeah. it just kind of, blew my mind because I had forgotten. Yeah. 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 When when we were that age, and even though the ball players were just a few years older than us, they always seemed so much older. Exactly. Than we were. You know, I mean, Tom Seaver was in the major leagues. Uh, What were were we, Marty? We were, what, 20 in? uh, What year? Yeah, yeah, 67. Yeah, we were 20. Yeah. So we were 20, and he was... He was uh, 20, so what, 22, 23. 23, yeah. Yeah, so, yet it seemed like such a big difference in age. Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, but you know, you when you're 20, you're still into the game like you're a kid, really. And, and that's why, and I'm four years younger than you guys, but that's why it just seemed, it just over the years it escaped me and and you always you, you just it just seemed that he was 10 years older or or more and yet yes there it is you're right. and it sort of brought back the 50 year thing and and I'm sitting there going well yeah it makes sense I'm 69 <laughs> <You know? laughs> like how'd that happen yeah but, exactly yeah but anyway yeah but he was I mean I just remember probably going Obviously, I went to more Met games than any other over the years. I don't know if you knew, Robert, that, you know, we grew up in Jackson Heights. So it's, you know, a 10-minute bus ride almost, you know, right to Shea Stadium from our corner. So, you know, even if before we could drive, we can just get on the bus and, and go to the game. Uh, right. And, and we went to plenty and probably saw Seaver pitch more than anybody. Uh, and he was just phenomenal. Yeah. Well, back in those days, back in those days, they had a four-man starting staff. So you, when you went to the game, you had a twenty-five percent chance of seeing him. Usually, so that's true. true. It was only a four-man staff. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I got to see him pitch a number of times as well, and uh, it's it's a shame he should never. Have ever been on another team? Uh, the, the Mets mishandled that so so bad. But um, 
Oh, oh, it, is, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. But it, it, it should have gotten into more World Series than, than two. That's with the career that he had. But some guys never make it at all. So, you know. I yeah. Mean, Did you guys read uh, Shamsky's book? Either one of you? No, no. Oh, way but... back when I did, yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, Robert. I would, uh, I, w- I would get Shamsky's book if you could. I, uh, I actually read it. I think I mailed it to Ralph, so he, so he could read it. But uh, you know, the, those guys. There was uh, Shamsky and uh, Swoboda and Buddy Harrelson and uh, one other guy, I think that um, made the trip to see Seaver at his, uh, you know, at his uh, vineyard. Right. And they, they, you know, even though they had spoken to Nancy and she said that, well, you know, I can't guarantee. And this was like, what, three years ago? I think three years ago. Um, can't guarantee that you know, he'll be able to see you or he'll know who you are because he has good good days and bad days and sometimes good half days and uh, stuff like that. So, but they decided to go anyway and, and they, you know, they were at a hotel and then Nancy called them up saying, come now, <laughs> come now. And so they did. And, you know, they were able to spend, several hours of prime time and you know but the the book was basically about the 69 season and right. and and you know visiting visiting him uh also and uh yeah it was really it was very good it was really good yeah all right i'll i'll have to get on amazon and uh, get that mm. yeah definitely so, all right. Any, well, you guys got anything else? Or? Well, I just would, you know, would want to say that he was a 12-time All-Star, three-time Cy Young winner, uh, three times led the NL in wins, three times the ERA leader, five-time NL strikeout leader. Uh, and, and you know, you mentioned earlier, Marty, that he had 61 uh, shutouts, yeah, I think that's only second to Warren Spahn, uh, who had 63. Yeah, and I mean it was just, and and when he was voted in the Hall of Fame at the time, it was the highest first ballot entry ever, 98.84 percent. Right. right, right, right. That's, that's and very and true. then now everybody, if they didn't know before, knows why. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was just unbelievable. Yep, yep. Yeah, we're definitely uh, going to miss him. And uh, I don't know if you guys are on Twitter or not, but you know, they everybody had something to say. You know, just oh yeah, yeah, incredible, incredible stuff out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, everybody did a good job. You know, on on TV talking about it. And uh, um, uh, what's his face, uh, Doggy? Had uh, Howie Rose on. He had Eddie Cranepool on uh, from at one o'clock uh, this afternoon, and uh, you know everybody has something to say. And uh, you know, the guy will uh, live forever. Uh, you know, and uh, oh yeah, well, in baseball lore, absolutely, absolutely, yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, another guy that that you know should be mentioned in. You know, in the same breath as Jerry Kuzman, and he was supposed to have his number retired this year, but it couldn't because of the uh, COVID. Nobody oh, there. Yeah. So right. yeah. So they put that off. Hopefully that can get done next year, and hopefully he's around. You know, but, <laughs> you know to see it. You know, yeah. getting very well, late with some of this stuff. Yeah. They did an interview with him today on uh, the TV broadcast, Gary Cohen and 
uh-huh. uh, Ron, Ron Darling and Hernandez. They got uh, Kuzman on the phone, and they were talking to him. You know, yeah. yep. asking him, you know, what he remembered and everything. So, yeah, hey. So it was a uh, was a great career, and it was uh, fun talking with you guys about it tonight. Yeah, very, very yep. enjoyed it. Enjoyed it, and uh, you know we'll. Uh, <clears throat> We'll be we'll be back. I'll have to talk to Ralph. So you will go back on again, but uh, and hopefully we have uh, some you know better play out of the Mets to talk about than we've seen lately. Although tonight was uh, a very nice comeback. Very good to see. Yeah, that's Absolutely. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. All right. Nice All right, show. Yep. Okay. Uh, have a good night. Speak Take care. Everybody next week, everybody, you are comfortably zoned. Have a good evening. Good night. Bye. The proceeding has been a comfortably zoned network production. You are advised to keep your dreams wet your humor dry, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting offices and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening, everyone. Happy trails.